in my mind, I would want to be a golden retriever dog. You have like total puppy vibes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So when I heard this question, honestly, the first reaction I would have is I would probably cry. You know that uh, I do have a pretty heavy fear of public speaking. I'm also a fairly reserved and shy person. Um, and I remember when I was like in college and then transitioning into my professional career, it was a real big struggle for me. today's Dear ABG, I wanted to share with you all a little about my skincare routine, since this is something that we also get quite a few questions about. As I share on our podcast, I am in my mid-30s now and making some lifestyle adjustments because my body just ain't the way it used to be. I really like the idea of embracing the natural changes that happen to my body as I age, but I do think it's important that I do what I can to preserve my health and slow down the process with preventative care. So here is my skincare routine focused on preventative care. I always start with a good wash with a simple cleanser. Then I use an alcohol-free toner to add more moisture to my skin since my skin tends to run on the dry side. Next, I'll use a vitamin C serum to smooth and brighten my skin tone. My skin tone can get kind of dull and splotchy, especially when I'm not getting enough sleep. Sorry, mom, I really am trying on this one. Then I use one pump of my Agency Future formula. This is a custom formula that helps with my fine lines, skin texture, firmness, and discoloration, which my Agency Dermatology provider created for me. I like Agency because there are only four active ingredients and a moisturizing base. Like I said, I like to keep things simple and minimal. Here's what I did. I took a skin quiz and based on that, my licensed dermatology provider created a custom formula for me that they shipped to me. And my dermatology provider checks in with me before each new bottle to see how I'm doing, offer tips, and adjust the strength of my formula. The goal is effective but gentle treatment that can evolve with my skin over time. And they're vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, and fragrance-free. All the things that I love. So I just use one pump and smooth it over my skin. And last but not least, a nice moisturizer to lock it all in. And that's it. I also drink lots of water, eat my veggies, and use sunblock. If you want to give Agency a try, check out the link in our description and you'll get your first month free. Now, back to our show. Where am I going? That's the toilet. Welcome to another episode of Dear ABG, where we answer your listener submitted questions. If you don't know us already, we run a podcast called Asian Boss Girl, a podcast for the modern day Asian American woman. I'm Janet. I'm Mel. And I'm Helen. Today's first question comes from me in Irvine, California. Me writes, if you could be an animal, what animal would you be? In my mind, I would want to be a golden retriever dog. Golden retrievers are super loyal, lovable, and they just need food, a lot of love, and they could sleep and just like walk around the corner. Mm. You know, so I would be a, a golden. Oh, I could see Mel as a yeah, yeah. I totally see you as a golden retriever. <laughs> yeah, Mel is a very you have like total puppy vibes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think if I were an animal, the first thing that came to mind was a bunny because oh. my my, my zodiac so sign is a rabbit. So and I love Judy Hopps from Zootopia. So I was like bunny. Mm. But I think if I were a non-domesticated animal, I would have to survive in the wild. And oh. one thing that I thought about was like a wolf. My high school mascot was um, not just a wolf, but a wolf pack. Or oh. like the wolf pack. And I think wolf pack is known for their loyalty and their devotion to one another. So if I were a wild animal, I think I'd want to be a wolf or a bird because I want to fly. Um, if I could be an animal. I was thinking about what the experience of the animal would be having, yeah. and um, I think it would be amazing to fly. Uh, so I thought about what type of bird though, um, and I think a dove, because doves also mm. represent peace. Mm. That's, I don't know if that's like a cheesy reason, but um, yeah, I would love to be a bird and fly and, and represent peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our next question comes from Susan from San Francisco. She asked, what would you do if your SO's parents don't like you for superficial reasons? I met my boyfriend's mom once and after looking at me, she already dismissed our entire relationship and asked him to break up with me. Ooh. We don't want to do that, but I also don't want to come between him and his mom. What do you think I should do? Um, I am sorry to hear that. That is really unfortunate. Um, I think if I were in that situation, 
I would, I know you're concerned about your boyfriend breaking ties with his mom, but at the end of the day, they have a relationship where he should be able to talk to her and tell her why he wants to be with you, what type of a future he sees with you, um, and why it would matter to him that she cares about you. Um, and I think from your position, it is a, it's a strange one to be in for sure. I would probably bring oranges. <laughs> I don't know if that's like so like surface level, but I think showing the effort that you are more than what you look like mm -hmm. is very important. I think offering to help cook dinner if you're over for dinner, doing all the things that Asian moms love, like asking if you can help with like cleaning or, or whatever it is, showing that you care for her son very much, um, making sure that you show up actively that way too. And I know it's hard, especially if you know that this person doesn't like you, you just gotta keep like keep showing that, mm -hmm. yeah, especially if you wanna be with your boyfriend long term, like show that you are there and you're gonna be there for the long term and have her appreciate you for who you are. I, I mean, Helen gets at the point in terms of the oranges or the cooking. Uh, I think it's figuring out maybe if it's a cultural background or whatever it is, how she receives respect and love. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe talk to your boyfriend about that and then extend that because that's almost like an olive branch. It's kind of, it's a little bit being the bigger person here where like she might be judging you, but you are trying to show to her that you're, you have good intentions mm -hmm. and that you want to build a positive relationship with her. So when I heard this question, honestly, the first reaction I would have is I would probably cry. Um, it's just so tough what you're going through, especially if she's just judging you based off like superficial reasons. And I probably just, you know, talk to myself and, and say, you know, she might be a little judgmental, so maybe her decisions or her judgment isn't the best one, maybe. Um, but I would agree with Helen and Janet that, you know, at that point, if I really want to be with this man and that's his mother, but I acknowledge that that's their relationship. My relationship with him is separate, but I do want to build this connection with her. And I would probably kill them with kindness. I would be as nice as I can and find the ways that she receives love and respect and try to give that back to her. But again, I know what you're going through is really difficult and it's not, and it's hard to navigate. So based on what Helen and Janet said, I would also agree just to extend that olive branch when you can. So the next question comes from someone in Philadelphia. They asked to remain anonymous. This person says, Hi guys, my question is how do you build the skill of speaking up in social situations in professional or career related circumstances, such as job interviews or networking events? I'm a naturally shy medical student on virtual interviews for residency programs mm -hmm. and Zoom socials have made it difficult for me to speak up in front of multiple people, especially on an interview setting where I feel pressure to sell myself. Mm -hmm. I find it even more difficult to come up with interesting stories about myself on the spot. I'm also a fairly reserved and shy person um, and I remember when I was like in college and then transitioning into my professional career, it was a real big struggle for me. Um, but I foresaw that, I knew that interviewing and networking was going to be something I had to do. Um, so I just put myself out there. I went to events knowing that I wasn't going to love it, uh, but you, if you go and do something enough times, you'll get more comfortable. At least you'll become less scared. Mm. Um, and so I know it's a little bit challenging because it's been more virtual based, but I think the same rule applies, which is just do it more frequently and then you'll eventually get more comfortable. Uh, the other thing I would say is it sounds like if it's interviews and it's like sharing specific stories, you can actually kind of prepare for those. So I did this for interviews, like you kind of know generally what are different types of like questions they might ask you and come up with a strong anecdote, like a, a thing that you uh, feel comfortable talking about that you rehearse kind of by yourself so that it just feels natural. Um, so a combination of preparation and just putting yourself out there and you'll eventually find your style. That's great advice, Jay. Um, to add on to what Janet said, um, for me, preparation is the biggest thing for interviewing and networking events. I actually created this like long Google Doc with all these like optional questions, like behavioral questions, like um, skill set questions, and I answered all of them. So whenever I have an interview come up, I just look at my long list, there's like 20 questions there, and I just let the ones I think they're gonna ask, and I rehearse my answer multiple times. Also for those stories, write a bunch of stories down like earlier, like two weeks ago, and then just have it on your growing list and just reference them for when they ask you those questions. In terms of preparation for like an interview, I do this thing where, maybe it's from my choir background, but I like to warm up my voice. Mm -hmm. So, because I do think your vocal cords need to be kind of ready and ready to go on this for on the spot question. So what I do is I actually call up my mom and I talk to her just for 30 minutes. It's just like me talking for 30 minutes straight with my mom, it just kind of warms me up. And then, and then I go through all my questions again. The first thing I hit is my elevator pitch. Once I nailed that, I know I'm like ready to go and like, 
my mind is in go mode to like answer. So I think it's like a mental thing. So for some reason, vocal warm ups or warming up my voice really helps with that. So if you could try that or find a friend that you could like maybe run your questions with, or if you don't feel comfortable, there's always a mirror in your room that, that I, I used to do that a lot too. So hope these help. I totally agree with everything that you ladies are saying. And if you've listened to our podcast long enough, you know that uh, I do have a pretty heavy fear of public speaking. And I've learned that a lot of it is because it lives in my own head. This fear that what I have to say is not worthy enough, that no one wants to listen to it, that my stories aren't interesting enough. And like Janet and Mel were saying, with repetition, you start to really believe that your story is worthy enough. And similar to what these ladies were saying, also write your story down. I actually remember our first speaking event, um, we had the questions ahead of time and I wrote all the answers out for all of the questions and I just stood in front of the bathroom mirror and talked to myself for an hour. Literally just talked to myself for an hour and it's weird and uncomfortable even if you're in the privacy of your own yeah. home. Mm -hmm. It is so strange but I did that and I had a lot of shame doing it while I was doing it but like now I can say it without shame because I do believe that with that repetition and with that practice it becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. You're gonna feel that anxiety and that like fear no matter what if you're just uncomfortable being the center of attention and having spotlight on you and that pressure to be like tell me a story <laughs> i hate that feeling but if you practice at least you know what you're gonna say and once you just get over that hump of like Ugh, i'm nervous then you you can free flow and, and just speak from the heart because you already know what you're gonna say so yes write your stories out practice it ahead of time it's not weird um, and you're gonna see a lot of growth in this area if you do so that's self luck with your interviews yes. Yeah. And this concludes today's episode of Dear Vici. If you have a question for us or you want advice on anything, check out our link in bio and Instagram to ask or leave a voicemail. We are also a podcast, Asian Boss Girl. You can find us on all of the podcasting platforms, Spotify, Google Play, all of the podcasting platforms. And we will see you on the next video. Bye. Bye. My high school mascot. Mascot. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, Helen. One lit, one, fuck. Oh, no bell. I, I don't like birds. I'm actually very like they're both bleh, like yeah. ooh, like a, sorry bird lovers out there, yeah. but um, they do scare me. Mm -hmm.